We back. Episode six, Patrick Gale show. Close out the year strong as we can. The hottest show in the streets. Everybody's talking about the Patrick Gale <laughs> show. It's one of a kind with J.R. and Coach Gale. You see the man himself in his uh, all for the gold and the Rams quarter zip as always. The Coach Patrick Gale. What's up, Coach? What's going on, Jr. Happy holidays to you and your family. Same to you, Coach. Everything is good, man. Closing this year strong, getting ready for a strong 24 campaign with new segments coming, new shows coming, and some other ideas I don't want to share on the air quite yet for the haters. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep, keep your good ideas to yourself, Jr. Don't don't let it out. Don't let it out till it's ready to come out. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, we ain't talked since the big win against Fam U. Tell me about that win at Fam U. And I know it didn't count for the standings per se, but it's good. You went to Tallahassee when it, when they bought you, and you went in there and got and got at the W. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a really big win, you know, for our program. Our, our guys they they persevered through a lot of adversity. It was a double overtime win on the road and. You know, FAMU's a good team. You know, don't 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 get it twisted. They they're they're pretty good, and I'm I'm sure they're gonna you know compete you know in the swag. But it was a big win for us, big win for our program. Um, we we would have liked to have followed it up with with some other big wins, but you know I I was proud of the guys, and I'm proud of the way that they have handled adversity this season. Yeah, because folks, I'm gonna tell you some. Coach Gale's team has been shorthanded. You know they. Play tight every game, but when you're shorthanded, playing hard, Coach Gale demands that you play, you run out of gas. Listen, I'm just being honest about not to make excuses for it. The guys run out of gas in the second half. You know, they play play hard, then the, the not lack of depth or, and lack of guys he, he can go to bites him in the butt, and they start fouling, getting beat on dribble like their shots don't fall, they fall short. So they are competing like heck, but they, they have been shorthanded, so – Understand. You look at the scores, you can tell they were shorthanded and they ran out of gas. Yeah, Jr. I mean, we we don't like to make excuses. And the bottom line is, I like to give credit to those teams that have beaten us. You know, we played some really really good teams, although we played you know at home for the most part. But you're right. They, you know, we we've been hit with a lot of adversity. But the bottom line is, Jr. Nobody cares. You know, it's another coach will say, "Well, shoot, we got problems too." Nobody want to hear about that. It's either, it's either you win or you lose. At at this level, it's a production, you know, uh, business. So we we were happy that we we went into the break with a big win. Uh, we needed that win. It was a conference win, big win. We're five hundred in conference, and you know, we we've got work to do. And there's a lot of teams, you know, above us that that are rolling. So. You know, no one's gonna feel sorry for us, Jr. You know how it goes, man. They, 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 they are very happy that we're in the position we're in, and like for us to stay that way. So we, we've got to just, you know, close in the the, the reins and 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 get going and and start a winning streak, which we did start going into the break. Yeah, and coach, but you kind of have a nice little setup here. You you're only playing two games in about two weeks, so you got time to kind of work on some things, self scout. Get guys better, get guys healthy, get guys integrated in the system. So, I you know it's not like you say you got to win going to to the main break, but you got some time here really to set yourself up for a strong January through February to get this thing right the right way. It's an like season tournament, so setting up good for you actually. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you're absolutely right, and and the best thing about it is no class. You know, no no class, so we could get guys in the gym, and we've got some guys that have improved, and we got some guys that haven't played, you know, early in the season that are now having to be thrust into the lineup and, and play some minutes. So, you know, this is a great, you know, next couple of weeks to to like you said, uh, get some guys healthy, uh, self scout, which we 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 do daily, and and make some guys, you know, understand their roles, and and get some guys that you know have been you know comfortable in their roles to really really embrace you know how important it is for them to do what they do for us but I, I do believe that we do have the uh, depth once everybody's healthy to make a run and you know the the problem is they are we're going now to play the east division and the east is loaded this year so we're we're up for the task and we're excited for the challenge yes i know you're coming to clark at morehouse eventually here so we'll be out there <laughs> in our gear. <laughs> yeah, I got a live show. 
I got to take care of you, JR. I got I to gotta take care of you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Christmas Christmas will be coming soon uh, uh, for you uh, uh, at the JR household. But but now nah, we, we, we're we looking, you know, forward to those games. But you know me, I'm not looking ahead. Uh, right now we, we've got Clayton State coming up, and I know Clayton State is excited. Um, great coaching staff there. So it's going to be a challenge to, to, to play them at home uh, this weekend. And coach, uh, who are some guys you want to highlight over this first twelve game season that has really gotten better for you? You really are surprised by their growth so far in this early part of the season right now. Well, first guys, uh, Shakur Poteet. Um, he had, I believe, it was thirty one against FAMU in that win. Um, and Shakur, you know, he's 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 a great story. He started out at Bethune Cookman. Um, he's from Orlando, Florida. Um, started out at Bethune Cookman. And um didn't play um the last uh, year and a half, but but was still in school and you know wanted to come to Albany State. Um has been contacting my assistant coach, you know, for for a minute and and we and we gave him an opportunity and he's taken full advantage of the opportunity. Great leader, uh, great floor general. Um, I, I'm excited about what he can be. Has not scratched the surface on how good he can be, but he has shown flashes and. You know, it's all about consistency, Jr. at this level. So um, he's he's developing that, and I'm excited about what he's going to do, not just in the rest of the season, but, you know, for the rest of his career. And then I also got to shout out another Orlando kid, uh, Andy Antoine. Um, there's, there's been a lot of people, uh, based on what he did last year, that that kind of have, you know, doubted what he can do for us, and, and I'm glad he stepped up. Um, he's he's played really well for us. He played actually pretty well against FAMU. He had three blocks in that game. So I'm happy to see, you know, his growth. And and the thing that I love about both those guys is that they're both high GPA guys. Um, I believe Shakur had a 3.6 this past semester. Andy has always been on all academic uh, conference team since he's been here. Um, so, you know, to me, I think his his GPA actually went a little down to like a three four three five. So you know Andy Andy's a really good student. Shakur's a really good student, and they display that on the court. They're very very intelligent. They have high basketball IQ. So I'm excited about those two. No doubt, and coach, like you said, man, having to play guys that you really didn't play on playing yet, it's gonna give you extra depth going to say going forward because that's very important. Sometimes you don't know what you have on the guy, so you throw him out there and he, see what he can do. And sometimes and they clips from on the court. You might say it practice, but sometimes like, okay, throw him out there and see. And he gives you more than you thought he could give. Then he gets up a role by keep doing it, be, be consistent. Like I always like you say as well. Like about that piece of it, seeing that young men who work go crazy every day, work hard and see them on the court, it really surprised you with Coach AD. Well, you, you know what, JR? I'm glad you said that. So I'm gonna highlight a freshman from America's Georgia. Uh his name is Cameron Evans. And Cameron stays in the gym. Cameron stays in my assistant's office. He's one of those young men that when I get on the team and and, and you got grad transfers and, and seniors that don't want to be around me because it's kind of rough. And, and when you, you know, go through a losing streak, it, it's not going to be pretty. He's the one of the guys that's not afraid to be around. And Cameron got his first start um, against Kentucky State going into the break was perfect from the field in the first half, finished with 15 points. So that's just a testament of staying with it, staying, you know, working at it. He did not make a lot of shots, although he was working on it and was in the gym. It just didn't fall. And he just saw the first one go in against Kentucky State and was perfect from the field in the first half and played really well. But I was happy for him because he stays in the gym and he stays around us trying to get better always watching film with, you know, my assistant coach, Coach White, always asking what can I do, you know, to get better and to help the team. So I was proud of him. And you know what? Sometimes going through that and, and seeing that in a kid is better than, you know, being perfect or peaking, you know, early. It's a long season. You know, we're the only two semester sport. So a lot of things can happen in the second semester that you don't foresee uh, on and off the court. So it's great to see a kid continue to work at it. It helps the team, you know, have confidence because, you know, let's say you're not playing and you see a freshman that 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 gets his first start and takes advantage of it, it's going to make you motivated. You know, let's say you're a senior and you see a freshman, it's like, whoa, he's got that in him? Well, I've seen him practice, but finally we see it in the game. 
you know, that makes, you know, have you have that much confidence. And at this time of year, JR, the team's got to coach itself, man. They've got to be – you You actually get more work done outside of practice if you're a winning team. And I know a lot of teams that are winning are doing that, you know, especially with the main guys. So it's great to see kids on their own kind of work and develop. And coaches get a lot of credit, but, you know, I like to give a lot of credit to our student athletes that, that actually work at it on their own. No doubt, because you have to go out there on your own because we know how the, the, the rules are. And you got a certain time limit. You have to Correct. do what you get. You can't just get better in those two hours or whatever you have to nope. practice. Or you got to do it on your own. And, you know, like, you know, like for me, it was doing 300 shots a day, 100 free throws a day, um, doing a 30 minutes of slides. So those things are trying to stay better. Like I told you all for once before, my handle one because I ain't had time as a football dude, but. I can shoot and defend, and I knew that he'll keep me on the court. <laughs> no, I knew that. I had to. I had to be the off, off the bounce guy. I can still pump fake, get by you, but I ain't got. The, I ain't got all that. <laughs> you don't. You don't need that, man. At this level, man, I, I tell my guys all the time. Nobody's trying to come see that, you know. And, and, and that's the thing. When kids work out, you got to make sure they're not doing all of that. What you just said. Can you dribble, pass, and shoot? Can you? Can you execute? you know, your options in the offense. Do you even know your options in the offense for you to score, for you to get an assist, for you to set up another guy? And that's the biggest thing. And, you know, that that's what I want to highlight at this level. You have to know where you are and where you fit in the defense and the offense. You have to know what your coaching staff is not just wanting you to do, but wanting the whole team to do and execute that. And that's very hard you know, for a lot of uh, young players. I, I watched a lot of high school games and I was very impressed with a lot of high school uh, uh, teams that I saw. And and that's a testament to the coaching, to the high school coaching. I must say, and I, and I saw teams from Georgia and Florida and even up as far as New York and, and uh, Texas. And, and there's a lot of great high school coaching out there. I, I have to give it up to all the high school coaches out there. And coach, you know, I must tell you, man, I, I'm, I watched some games as well, and I was trying to tell these young men, I said, hey, I know your coach probably told you stand in a spot, but a 45 cut or a random cut here or there to the open spot in the zone or they're loading up over to the one side of the floor, it's flash, get you a quick little mid-range. I know that the analytics is going to kill the mid-range game or just flashing and cutting, but, hey, I don't think the game is space now, but, hey, that still works. You know, yeah. I, I wish a lot of young men when get stuck in this, we're going to stand, put you in the corner, you on the wing, and you here and you there. And, you know, really we can still play the game the right way. And random cut, flash cut, back pick, you know, run action on, on, on the second side, try to get open shot. I just, hey, we're going to run a middle ball screen or a side ball screen and pray to Pray to God we can get put on the right action. Well, well, you know, you know what's funny, Jr. I, I was, I was, um, we were watching. I want to say the Lakers and and the Celtics yesterday with my my young sons, and now they're into basketball. And it's funny, uh, NBA Two K actually got them into basketball. Not so now they watch games. You know, they love Steph Curry, they love LeBron James, and and my son that's you know young was like, you know, Daddy, was I born when LeBron was playing for the Miami Heat? I was like. First of all, how do you even know that? Then I thought, oh, yeah, that's right. NBA 2K because they have those vintage teams. But I, I bring that up because that's exactly what made Miami so great with Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and, and Chris Bosh is they, first of all, they were a really good transition team. But their half-court offense was based on a lot of those 45-degree cuts, those baseline cuts. Of course, they had shooters, you know, and Ray Allen and and and, and Battier and, and, and those guys. but they did a great job playing off each other. And I don't think people realize how high a basketball IQ that team had because there weren't a lot of ball screens. It was a lot of reading because those three guys could get their shot anytime they wanted. And Chris Bosch kind of moved his, his, uh, his, his position on the floor to more of a perimeter, not just offensively, but defensively. And that's one of the best teams I've seen defensively and one of the best teams I've seen offensively and just in how they played off of each other. And I think you only get that from playing. You know, you you can sit down and, and watch games all you want, but if you're not playing basketball 
and playing the right way, playing that way, you won't understand that. So that's a great point to bring up, Jr. In my my he one of the few teams who actually helps off the strong side three, which is rare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is rare. That is rare. That is very rare. But when you hey, have athletes, when you when you have interchangeable parts and athletes, you can do that. It's all about recovering. You know, and, and that's another thing. Um, I teach my guys to read closeouts, you know, and, and that's when you have, a you know, in our conference, we have athletes. So you better read that closeout quickly. You think you have an open spot and, and um, you know, guys will block your three point attempt. So that's another thing that kids have to learn how to read closeouts. And again, you, you can't learn that playing against, you know, guys at your level or guys, the same athletes as you. You got to play against better athletes. You got to play against longer, you know, better defenders to learn that. And at and at the college level and even at the pro level, that's what the game is all about. Can you get your shot off? Can you make the right reads in split second decisions? And that was something that, that my pop driven me, Coach Gail, was to he did drill me this call quick shoot, pretty much getting your yep. get, get locked loaded quick. So when it walked into me, I made up my mind was going to shoot. I was going to give you a hard pump and go or do what I was going to do with it or pass the screen away. I I determined that based on what I saw. But if I had an opportunity, I was going for that three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but to have that quick release, it's all about your legs. And that's that's one of the things that the players I just Football mentioned. helped with that, too. Football helped yes, with that, too. For yes, me. yes. Football. You know, another uh, sport that, that helps with, with footwork is soccer especially with post players. So, you know, anything that, that activates your lower body and, and your fast switch muscles and also activates kind of your upper body and, and then your split decision uh, making, all of those that you can incorporate. I, I stress to, you know, parents of, of high school and, and middle school and junior high uh, uh, children to let get them to play as many sports as possible. Don't just, you know, keep them to one sport. No doubt, because like I said, for me, it was, Basketball, football, baseball, tennis, and track and bowling. So yep. I was using different things to make me in the slot, maybe in the slot. I was slot receivers. Like I could, you know, fast twitch and get off release, get off jams because my footwork and my use my hands too, and I coordination and try to push and catch the ball where you don't see it coming sometimes. Yeah, you gotta really have that. So it all works itself out when you because I just like coach, you know, you see this as well. Too many kids already are specialized already. Yeah, Where yeah. And, and, basketball, and, 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 football, baseball, whatever, not get a chance to play cross train per se. And and you got to cross train your brain. I mean, you also, you know, I stress when I was a teacher in middle school, I would stress kids learning chess, you know, learning, you know, different musical instru instruments, learning uh, different languages. Even as adults, you know, we need to do that. I was just telling myself that. You know, that's something that I'm going to start doing, you know, and pick back up just because, you know, your brain's like any other muscle in, in, in your body. If you don't use parts of it, you know, it, it, it you don't want it to just sit there and atrophy. So, you know, those different sports to use and activate different parts of your body. And then also is just as important to activate different parts of your brain. You know, that's what makes kind of the holistic athlete. No doubt, Coach, it's, 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 really, it's really, really beautiful that you say that, man, because that's something that we believe in and we, we, we preach in. And so, Coach, for you, man, uh, uh, how how was your holiday season? Uh, how has it been to kind of be around the family and kind of reset yourself as well, man? Uh, it's, it's, it's been awesome, man. I, I've, I've, I've purposely kind of, you know, for the, for the year, I put a lot of time, you know, into, you know, what I do. So, you know, for the few days, it, it seems like it's a big deal, but it's not. For the few days, you know, I really wanted to spend time with family. And, you know, it's cool getting to know your kids and your children, you know, just kind of be in their world, you know. And, and we as as um, uh, people at work, you know, we spend a lot of time at work and we don't spend enough time, you know, with our children. So it was it's awesome just to do that. It puts everything in perspective. Um, I, don't get me wrong. That's why I work. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, some of their Christmas gifts is, is, is they've been getting it all year. You know, the lights, you know, the house, and food, and food in the fridge, you know, that, 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 that ain't easy, especially in this crazy world. But, but it's great to just see, you know, my children grow and, and just, you know, be in their world. So that I, I wouldn't, you know, trade that for anything so you know shout out to 
to my children, you know, um, youngest, Asael, he's six. Um, Solomon, you know, he just had a birthday. He's nine. Um, Asay is 10. And uh, Sanai, she's she's in college right now. She's about to be 19 next month. And, you know, my wife, Sharita, she, she holds it down for everybody. So, you know, shout out to all the families and to all those that have lost loved ones. You know, um, I'm in a situation where my mom's birthday is December 23rd and you know, she hasn't been, you know, here on earth for, for a while now. So you never get used to it. It's always a little weird. And then I lost my, my father, you know, a few years ago. So at this time, you know, a lot of people are going through it and they keep it inside. So, you know, definitely prayers to, to anyone that has, you know, lost a loved one. Um, we just had, you know, uh, a death in, in the uh, Albany state family with a couple of people of, you know, losing loved ones. So definitely prayers go out to them as well. No doubt with Coach Gail, we, we're going to keep those prayers up and the way we're going to pray for you this weekend. And we're going to claim it now that you will uh, defeat Clay State at the Albany <laughs> West Campus Gym over there. <laughs> we we missed that, JR. I mean, man, we, we haven't done a show and then we start losing games. So thank you, JR. You know, now, now, now I can, can, can get back to, to the good graces, man. I appreciate that, man. Where you yes, been at, and, man? Where and you coach, been I've at? been good, Coach. I've been living well and good, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing the right things, Coach. So it's going to work. The right thing. You know what? God bless you. God bless you, Jr. Nah, no, I, 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 I'm sure you have, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy that 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 we're back, man. I, I've missed it, and you know, this is this has been fun, man. I really appreciate you. I say it every show, so I can't go without saying it again. You know, I really appreciate what you do for us in our program for our student athletes. Anytime, Coach. And we'll be back next Tuesday, same bad time. Coach Patrick Gale show, hopefully with a great request. We've planned his best victory here. And we're going to get ready for that mild game after that, man, and keep this thing train going, Coach. Got to got, got to get this winning streak going. So we got we to gotta get to work. Yes, sir, folks. It's the Patrick Gale show. Check us out next week. We out.